Sorry. Good morning, Jeremy. How you doing? Hi, Steve. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. So Steve Schneider here and Jeremy Rustin, and this is the third or fourth episode of our podcast series called On Vandendorp, but really it's an exploration of Titliwiki and hypertext, um, and we're studying a, a book, a text, by uh, Christian Vandendorp called From Papyrus to Hypertext. So, um, And what we're going to do today is a little different than what we've done in the past. As you might see, this sort of what's up tiddler in front of you. Um, let me make that a little bigger for you. Um, what we're going to play with today is talking about a, a technique that Jeremy and I are working on that we're hoping uh, participants in the Design Right Studio I'll uh, stop playing with my phone there so it's not on the camera. <laughs> uh, participates in the Design Right Studio this this term are able to contribute their conversations and their annotations of Vandendorp and so we're going to show you with, with a method and we're going to talk a little bit about the concept of introducing a tagging scheme or an organizational scheme on top of the Vandendorp text which we're going to call uh, four words so um, without further ado let's let's jump right in and uh, in the next half hour 40 minutes hopefully this will all come to make some sense so um, so the idea here really is to talk about um, annotating Vandendorp using four words. And um, those four words are text, hyper, wiki, and tiddly. In other words, the four halves of the words hypertext and tiddly wiki. But I put them in that particular order and reverse them just to make things interesting. And, um, and, and in the... Um, the on Vandendorp Tiddler, you will see that, or, or on Vandendorp Wiki, you'll see that these words are explained in, in some detail. But Jeremy and I are going to walk through the four words and talk about them a little bit first, and then we'll talk about annotating. So you're ready to go, Jeremy. Here we go. So let's start with this word text, okay? So when I think of text, it's about a corpus. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, so this might be a little bit bigger. Um, James, does that make sense to you there? Does that look good? There we go. Okay. So when we think of text, this back half of the word hypertext, start with the word text because it's the biggest word. Um, and Vandendorp talks a lot about text. It's a corpus. And so, Jeremy, I wonder if you might want to comment a little bit on this, uh, on how you've confronted this notion of a text in your development work on TiddlyWiki. Sure. Um so t there's kind of jokes in um, for software developers that text is such a simple idea, a string of characters, and yet it's actually um, the, the, the way that text is implemented in software is extraordinarily strewn with difficulties that make it way more complicated than you'd expect. These are issues around character encodings and the, w the way that we encode the, the glyphs, the different shapes of characters into text. And so I think that's one of the characteristics of text for me. It's superficially simple, um, but belies a great deal of complexity. Um, my understanding of text has been really changed by reading the Papyrus to Hypertext book. I had a pretty conventional view that text was kind of what we see here, words broken up, by spaces and broken up into sentences by punctuation. And I thought of that as being more something that hadn't really changed since the dawn of writing and that the revolutionary period was now uh, when we introduced the hyper part, which mm -hmm. we're talking about in a moment. But what I've learned is from um, Papyrus to Hypertext is that uh, text has been changing um, throughout its life, that uh, right at the beginning, text was a stream of characters on a scroll um, without even spaces between the words and the lines went like that um, and it was designed to be read in a linear sequence um, and the features that we've added to text such as spaces between words punctuation layout on the page and so on are broadly all um, around making the text easier to navigate to give it this quality tabularity, the ability to be able to see at a glance a way to navigate your way around the text and thus open it up to random jump, random access, jumping around within the text. So uh, with that new understanding, tech is we've got to decide where the, 
where the line is between text and hyper. Um, well, well what's, and... what's interesting there is that you've, um, and that's why I love doing this with you, because you've, um, you've completely hijacked my concept of text, which is fine and great. So the way that, but, uh, and you've used it in a, in, a, in a literal sense to kind of focus on the way that characters or words or possibly even images are represented on a screen or on a page. And so the way that I've been thinking about text is to, um, especially in this course, which is called Designing and Writing Interactive Texts, plural, the text is the corpus or the body, the work that you are creating. And so I wanted to draw attention to this as a work so that when you create a text, it means you're creating a corpus or a body. And I think that um, I'm going to expand my definition to make sure that we incorporate both aspects of it. Um, so I think you're, you're, the aspect that you draw our attention to is, is absolutely critical. And, and I completely agree that Vandendorf spends a lot of time on that and draws our attention to those characteristics. Um, at the same time, I want to also make sure that we focus in on the text as a boundary so that when you're designing and writing an interactive text or when you're reading a text or it's a body of work, it's a corpus, there's boundaries around it and that you know your influence might be within that, that group, that body, and the things that sit outside of it are not part of your domain and part of your control. So if you have an external link to something outside the text, you just say, well, there it goes but I can't control what that looks like. But within my world, within my text, within my, my painting, within my canvas, within my body of work, my corpus, I have to be responsible for the design of that, everything that happens inside those walls, if you will. That's really cool. So I like the um, two different senses of text then. Jeremy's um, started out with this very mechanistic programmer sense of text. You've got this very academic sense of text. But then when you talked about the attributes of a text, it actually takes you right back to Tiddlywiki. So yes. maybe these things form a ring. Because a relatively unique characteristic of Tiddly, uh, of Tiddlywiki is this sense in which everything, in, in the sense which it's bounded, things are, Tiddlers, items are either within the Tiddlywiki or, the, or they're not, as well as being um, a thing that you can experience. It is a container for those things that you can use to, to carry them around. So Tiddlywiki is much more akin to your sense of text, to the, to the academic sense of text. Um, but I think they both work. And I think yeah. the, you know, the, the uh, original in coming up with these words was this idea of a progressive specificity of concepts. And I think um, you know, what I described was how some of the concepts that I thought were down here, so to speak, further along the line from text to hyper to wiki to tiddly, actually, you know, what, we learned, what I've learned historically is that their origins are earlier or further up. Yeah. Um, whatever that metaphor. You, you, suggested <laughs> that metaphor there was, was. you suggested that something unique about tiddly wiki was that it creates this container. Um, and I'm not sure I agree with that, I, I th because some of us, we might think of the entire internet as a text. So you can, and then in case nothing sits out of it except for our bodies um, yeah. and the physical world. But you can, so you, it depends on how you define text. And so yeah. when we write tiddly wikis, the boundaries are very clear. It's whatever sits inside that .html file. Yeah, and it's only, it's only a boundary um, in the sense of being a container, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, um, you can use TiddlyWiki without being aware of that boundary by linking and quoting to content outside it. It's, a, um, it's not a constraint on the system. It's a, it's no, but I, I want to make sure that the, the designers, the writers, and there's both designers and writers, are very aware of that boundary. Because yeah. from a design perspective, you take you have to yeah. take responsibility for the for everything you offer to the reader as long as it's inside yeah. your text. And is, is when you make a link, a bridge to something outside, you say, and sometimes you go to a website that says, "Hey, you're leaving my world now. Are you sure you want to do that?" And, and we don't typically yeah. do that in Tiddlywiki, but yeah. we but once you hit the, once you follow through and click that link, you're on your own. You know, whatever colors, whatever, you're on your own. So that's the. Um, but the value of focusing in on having a text 
allows you to define what precisely it is that you're designing and creating experiences for. So, um, and, and sometimes that gets lost when you talk about a hypertext. It's like, well, well no, first let's just talk about a text. And, and I think Vandendorp does that a lot. He talks about the text starting with the papyrus and then the, the codex is the text and the volumen, I think is how you might say that word. You probably, you know, the scroll, that's the text. And, um, yeah. and I love that idea. And he walks us through how as the nature of the text, the physical aspects of the text change, the um, reader behavior and experience changes. And that's wonderful. Yeah. So th there's text. That's the first word. That's the easiest word. <laughs> the, um, the word hyper is a little complicated. Um, and so um, I, I'm going to go to full screen here, too. I, I, and there we go. Um, and I'm going to further... Get rid of my uh, task bar. There we go. So now we should have a yeah a little bit more screen. So hyper is yet a different word, and and I um I got I, I get into footnotes sometimes, and uh, the the first time that the word hypertext appears in print, as far as I understand, is Ted Nelson's 1965. 1965, count them right. So hypertext is 52 years old. Um, Year of my birth, 1965. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 not mine. I'm a little older than that. Five years older than no, that. Not, but, uh, not uh, no coincidence, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> it could be. That's fa that's fascinating. But but in a footnote, and footnotes is where you find the real truth in the world. I think is that in his mind, that when he 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 could have called it all sorts of different things, but he chose the word hypertext, and I and, and he says he meant extension in generality or hyperspace and I've done a little reading on what hyperspace meant to people in 1965 and in a sense I believe it means multiple dimensions so hyperspace as it's used is the the space that you can't see and so hypertext meet, refers to dimensions of texts that are difficult to see with the naked eye and, and I, I feel like that sometimes in tiddlywinky right there you know there's dimensions out there that you can't see and um, and so hyper is not like it's a super text. It's not like there's, it's just multidimensional. Um, increasingly, yeah, that's nice and simple. Yeah, increasingly people have, in, in the past 20, 25 years, post-web, I'd suggest, have taken hypertext to mean anything with links. But I, I, I think it's, it's well beyond that. Um, it's not just having links. It's... Um, multiple dimensions um again you have to go back to hyperspace to understand what hypertext means um and so i think you want to keep that in mind and, and um i'm not sure how tiddlywinky necessarily addresses these multiple dimensions but i have some ideas I, and i don't know if that was ever cognizant in your mind is like that you're you're building something that's multi-dimensional i don't know if you play chess but you know you can have the two-dimensional chess board and then you can have 3d yeah. chess which i pretty much get lost in yeah. very quickly uh and does hypertext have that feel or does tiddlywinky have that feel to you that hyper aspect of it yes very explicitly actually so um that's also my inter my my reading of the word hyperspace and um it's somewhere in there in the um, complex braid of meanings um, for hypertext as well, but there's also insight in with Tiddlywiki. I um, I am expressing a belief I have that um, for multi-dimensional data, trying to trying to draw it spatially um, ends up producing a complicated mess that's very hard for us to understand. Um, and that tools like TiddlyWiki that instead of trying to depict visually the relationship, enable you to experience the relationship by interactively you know, jumping around within the text, um, are a better way to understand these multidimensional phenomena. So, d d uh, sorry, that, uh, it, there's a bit fast, but I'm recognizing that there are multi-dimensional phenomena um, that we want to um, that we, we can express our thoughts in a multi-dimensional way um, for sure can you expand um, on a little bit what what do you mean by multi-dimensional just expand on that for us a bit so a really simple case would be 
Um, we've all seen those diagrams of what a four-dimensional cube looks like. You know, it is possible to map a four-dimensional cube into three dimensions. It's analogous to mapping a three-dimensional cube into into two dimensions. Um, and and it sort of makes sense. A cube is sort of simple enough that you can trace it and understand that. But if you tried to do it with any more complex shape, it's just a mess of lines, and there's, it would be impossible for our puny brains to understand it. And yet, if instead you had an interactive thing where you showed this more complicated shape and then you showed it mutating smoothly towards the other state, you would have some chance of understanding it. And so I'm suggesting that actually picking up one of the, uh, the, the, the what hypertext could be about is bringing the time dimension in um, uh, to the to the text. Yeah, and, and that's thank uh, that thank you very much for that because that really sometimes as I'm building a, a wiki and creating tags and navigations from object to object or tiddler to tiddler, and you can navigate on three different tags. And I try to imagine how I would draw this navigational opportunity. Yeah. You're right. You can, you, as long as you've got two or three dimensions, you can manage it. Four dimensions, you can almost get it. But beyond, but you, 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 you can't get the seven can, or eight. There, there's stuff that we can manage in our heads that we can't draw. There's yes. a level of complexity that defies laying out on a piece of paper, and yet we're totally comfortable with it in our heads. Um, yeah, interesting. I'd like to, to the, the, the other thought I have with hyper is, you know, originally I was saying I thought of hypertext as being, the or the hyper part as being making text non-linear. Mm -hmm. And there's still a flavor of that here. But I wonder also whether interactivity isn't the key. Um, but, uh, and again, it's, it's a spectrum because all text is interactive in the sense that it requires my involvement to read it. Um, and uh, and but, but still, there's a there's a very there's a huge difference between interacting by eye or by moving your finger around. Um, and I guess actually we've also discussed how reading might involve moving your lips around yes. as well. Yeah, um, that, yeah, and that's and what I, in fact, the reason we call this class designing and writing interactive texts as opposed to designing and writing hypertext is to. Well, first of all, to attract students, because nobody will take a class in hypertext. Um, but also to focus in on that word interactive, which we actually don't mention very often in the class, despite it being one of the five words in the title of the text, or, or the title of the class. But um, yeah, I think, and so certainly the idea of creating an opportunity for readers to navigate this complex space within a text, um, this hyper space. Um, is what we and what we want to focus on, and so that's um, yeah. I think that's a, that's a really important word, um, and well, you'll see as we get there what we're, what we want to try and do with it. Um, it's I don't I'll have to go back and and that's what we'll be doing over the next week and see to what extent Vandendorp he pulls a lot on text. I. I want to go back, and I'm looking forward to going back and rereading these ten essays, the first ten essays, to see to how much does he make implicit or explicit reference to hyper. I don't know. It will be interesting to see what we do, and, that, and that's part of the exercise. Um, and then the third word, of course, is wiki. And um, I'm going to zoom in out so that you can see that we have quite a bit of content on wiki and that's about good enough there um, and, and so you very explicitly called tiddly wiki a wiki um, why um, because i had been interested in wikis for a few years and uh, my interest was piqued by a colleague saying here's website that anyone can edit that's written in 700 lines of Perl. So it was a kind of invisible technical characteristic of the wiki that first fascinated me. So I knew it was simple before I knew anything else about it, before I even knew what it did. And I very quickly came to the belief that what was important about the wiki was this idea of elevating um, linking to be part of the punctuation of writing. Um, and um, that's the characteristic that um, TiddlyWiki, you know, the most 
dominant characteristic of a wiki that Diddly Wiki carries forwards. It doesn't carry forwards the characteristic of being a thing that anybody can edit. Um, and I think it's telling that Ward Cunningham's latest wiki development, which is the smallest federated wiki, moves away from this model of a single centralized resource that anybody can edit towards federated resources where you copy other people's stuff, publish it yourself with your own annotations, which is much closer to the way that um, TiddlyWiki is already used. So um, let me stop you and then unpack that because you, you made two really important points on this word wiki that I want to unpack separately. The, the, we'll, we'll get to the federated slash collaborative point second. Um, the first um, has just left my mind. <laughs> Go back when you, and it was the thing you said right after when you said my first inclination was about anybody can edit, but it was, it had to do with I, it's come back. I mean, it's now. about the idea of punctuation. Um, uh, wiki text elevating linking to be part of the punctuation of writing. Yeah, so, and when you say linking, do you, because uh, you know that I use the word linking to mean a very explicit behavior, does that also, is linking generically I, to include transclusion? I, I meant linking between titlers particularly, but also linking to external places. But, but do you mean um, both uh, linking? Linking, me, linking, tagging, sorry. transclusion, all those count as linking in your broad word, so... Uh, well, the traditional wiki, um, you know, of, of all of those characteristics, yeah, linking is the most primordial one. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, not all wikis have all of them, right? Um, but a wiki without linking would be a funny kind of wiki. I yes. Think. So, so explain what you mean by making linking part of the punctuation of writing because that's that's a, a, a fabulous when, phrase when, when the web first hit in the sort of mid 90s um microsoft very quickly um built um quite a big good set well good set of tools an extensive set of tools for generating html from microsoft word documents so they thought immediately the Microsoft, the, the web was marvelous. Microsoft Word would be the perfect authoring tool, and you know, they'd embrace and extend it. And uh, when you and the experience that they created was the archetypal rich text editing experience for HTML, and it was the obvious thing for people to do after 20 years of the dominance of Microsoft Word and its paradigms. Um, and in that paradigm, to create a link, you type the text of the link. You go back and ink and you click a toolbar button saying make link and a little dialog box comes up dialog box comes up and you type the destination of the link and that process typically means taking your hands off the keyboard completely breaking any of your concentration and flow you're kind of stepping from between two radically different types of activity both in a sort of motor sense you know one's mousy and moving around and visual and one's old-fashioned typewriter um, so uh, that was sufficient that um, people didn't write, didn't use links in documents. Okay, so um, just just to, st just to stop you there, to because this is an absolutely critical point. Um, the idea that in in the Microsoft Word experience, you like you said, you type a word, you then highlight the word, and you use another tool to, and it was even called insert hyperlink. And so, it's, so you're saying that the writing is here and the linking is there. Mm -hmm. And now you want to say, just like when you type and you end a sentence, you hit a period, you don't say, okay, start a new sentence now. You want to say, okay, make a link, and you do that by just putting in square brackets yeah. around a word. And yeah. that's what you mean by the punctuation I mean, of that, writing. That's a, the idea of um, funny marker. You know, but suddenly saying when you type double square brackets they don't do what they what you thought they do they do this special thing was itself quite a clever idea that wikis have and so to push the analogy to its maximum limit the equivalent would have been for microsoft if they wanted to make the punctuation of writing like the punctuation of linking whenever you said oh i have to make a new sentence you'd go insert sentence and, yes. <laughs> you know, insert period here, insert comma here. Oh, I need a call, yeah. right? And so, but they, so we were, we've, part of Vandendorf talks about, we've learned how to put spaces in and punctuation, but until wikis, 
we never had the equivalent of linking in the punctuation. Yeah. Ah, that's wonderful. Thank you for, for yeah, so that's, that, that's a critical point. And, and, and that shows up for the first time in, in Ward Cunningham's wiki? Yeah, but the uh, but there's this point that it's if you talk to most people, their their dominant um, their suggestion of the dominant characteristic of Ward's original wiki was this idea that anybody can edit it. Right. But that I th I think has turned out to be a mirage because mm -hmm. in fact um, the culture on Ward's original wiki became problematic. It was one of the first online cultures to to suffer from some serious problems with. Um, you know, behavior of participants and so on. Um, and as I said, Ward is now working on this uh, smallest federated right. wiki, which is great. So I think that means now we're, we're all in agreement. <laughs> the, right. The but, but, but yeah, so the wiki. idea, when we say wiki, most people hear wiki, they think Wikipedia, they think, like you said, Absolutely. it's a collaborative environment in which everybody can write. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I, I understand that people say that, but I want the word wiki to mean as you just explained, it's an environment yeah. in which the character, hypertextual features, including linking, transclusion, et cetera, but primarily linking as a start, is ingrained in the punctuation, in the activity of writing. You write a link. You write yeah. a transclusion. You don't just, you don't make a link. You write it. That's, yeah. okay, good. And so, yes, that is that to me is what wiki means. Um, and then the second point, um, the federated aspects. That's quasi collaborative. Yeah, it, it, it's it's basically um, the relevance here is just that that's uh, the, the the idea of a centralized wiki that anybody can edit has been essentially discredited, and now all the smart money is on um, the federated equivalent. So um, wait, Wikipedia, even, Wikipedia is discredited? Well, Wikipedia. It's a big argument. I mean, it's a big discussion. This, the health of Wikipedia. Wikipedia is incredibly labor intensive. Okay. Um, so if it works, it's because of an extraordinary amount. It's arguable whether it does work in all cases. But there is also serious community abuse problems. Um, and it's essentially months. federated anyway. Uh, well, no, it's not. It's highly centralized. You know, there is only one page about each controversial topic. Right. Um, uh, and the, the, there's, you know, there can only be one perspective um, that's you know, dominant on each page and the arguments that rage about that. But, you know, it's, it's Wikipedia. Um, some people's experience of Wikipedia has been that it's been a toxic environment. You know, people have suffered uh, a lot of harassment and so on. Now, I've taken I us down a rabbit hole. If we go into the rabbit hole of Wikipedia, we'll never come out and we need to come back yeah. out. So let me, but, let me close but, that. But, but it, but it, I, I, I guess I was just exploring this idea that uh, whether centralized architectures really have been discredited. I actually think they have. I think now that there's not a centralized architecture out there that, that doesn't have a rabble outside yeah. um, saying why it shouldn't exist, whether it's Facebook, Google um, or uh, uh, Wikipedia. But the, and, and, and I, I apologize for even bringing it up because that whole discussion that we just had about Wikipedia really has nothing to do with the word wiki. It has much more to do with the culture of this thing that happens to have the word wiki to start it. But it, yeah. it might, yeah, so, um, okay, so. Um, and, and, and maybe, I mean, um, it is outside our, our, our core, but it's about um, online communities and, yes. yeah, 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 difficulties. And therein. so, when we see Vandendorp talking about the punctuation of writing, and when we see Vandendorp say, yes, we used to have words that went this way and this way and this way, you know, you kind of, he's talking about, in effect, wiki. You, could, you can make an argument that those are wiki, that's commentary on this idea of wiki, even though he, he might not have seen it at that time because he wrote before the word wiki existed as... as yeah. but I mean, I, I think maybe we, we, we'd, with, with a wiki, there's, there's emphasis on typing. You know, yeah. the, the symbols that we use for linking, they're square brackets because on a US keyboard, they're accessible without pressing shift. You know, they're easy to get to. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> and uh, and it, it is about making things typable. And it seems that that, it, that, that tracks the process of the, you know, the evolution of text as, it, as it's printed yeah. and, and so on. 
but type ability has given us different constraint. Yes. Okay. So, for instance, one of the things about that's turned out to be a winning characteristic of this idea of making um, linking the parts of the punctuation of writing is that wikis extend that to all formatting, of course, and that makes all formatting be explicit. So, if you copy a passage of text, you will know that you'll take the formatting with it because that formatting is encoded within the text itself. Um, so that's a, a generalization of, you know, we highlighted rightly the, the wiki linking part, but actually it's true for all wiki text, that all wiki text is an attempt to make the semantics of publishing, um, I'm not sure quite the right word, not the semantics of writing, but the semantics of publishing or presentation or something, be, part, be something that you can type. Yes, um, which brings up all sorts of implications that we'll perhaps talk about in the future about what happens as you move to um, um, dictation and things like that. But we'll just let that lie there for now. Yeah, um, and, and yeah. The, the, I imagine we'll all be squawking at each other like whales. Man. Yes, and, and the, 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 the fourth word that we introduce here, um, if I can find it because it's, you know, I'm lost in hypertext. Um, there it is is, um, here, I have a link to it right there, four words, is tiddly. And um, tiddly I have the least content for so far because I, in effect, know the least about it. And the tiddly is a word that you own. Um, not own, but I'm going to close a bunch of tiddlers so we can only have tiddly visible. Um, and uh, let me close that one too because we're going to come to that in a bit. Oh, there's so many tiddlers open. There we go. Tiddly. Um, and I don't think we mean small, as in fish, but maybe we do. So why tiddly? Because I know you hear this, oh, probably three times a day, every day, 365 a year. It's like, why do you call your product Tiddly Wiki anyway? So I want to hear a little bit about what Tiddly is, and then let's focus in on what's unique about Tiddly. What, what is different about Tiddly in terms of a thinking and a, a intellectual process and a writing process that differentiates Tiddly from other authoring systems. Excellent. So now I'm in quite good shape <laughs> for answering that question. I'm much better than I was 10 years ago. Um, so we're, we're treating this as a progression. We could, we've yes. gone progressively more specific. Um, and so Tiddly Wiki adds to everything that we've said about wikis. Um, I think two orthogonal ideas, so depending on your perspective, either one of these could be dominant. Um, the one I'll choose to go with first is um, the idea of the tiddler, which is the idea of cutting information up into the smallest semantic units. And Tiddly Wiki has this very opinionated thing that says that the purpose of recording information is to reuse it and that the um, way to optimize information for reuse is to record it in the smallest possible chunks the semantic units and then thread them together with linking lists aggregation and so on so there's there's a big idea there the idea of splitting information up into small chunks that requires a bunch of actually quite complex ideas, which is how you link these tiddlers together, how you create lists of them and so on. Um, but uh, we've um, found repeatedly that texts in the sense of a continuous ongoing text is great for reading, um, but it's not so good for analysis, let's say. Um, and, um, and sometimes even for collaboratively editing with other people. And this uh, general scheme of cutting information up in small named units seems to work very well. So for instance, the collaborative editing point, if you've cut the information up into small chunks, it makes the chance of a clashing edit um, less likely. And when it does happen, it makes it easier to resolve. So. I mean, that's characteristic, was the idea of a tiddler, um, and um, I should... Which uh, could have been perhaps. called object, node, Yes. It, 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 there was a man, many words, and I, I think it's in some ways beneficial. Um, ooh, my, I'm bad yeah, yeah, everything is a tiddler. That's... Yes, but it's beneficial to but have... They're all too generic. Yes, so, exactly. Um, 
I wanted a word that when I searched the source code, it would be unambiguous what it meant. So the, inside Fiddly Wiki, there's, what, there's functions called things like get tiddler, save right. tiddler, yes. and so on. And if those were get object and save object, it would be much less clear what they were. Um, so first bit, tiddler's second part, um, is the way that Tiddly Wiki extends the idea of wiki text. So in a conventional wiki, wiki text is this way of encoding in a typable form um, additional aspects of the text, such as linking and formatting and so on. And Tiddly Wiki takes that to an extraordinary and surprising extreme where the entire user interface that you experience of TiddlyWiki is built from wiki text, and more than that is built from a small number of wiki text primitives. Um, the value of that is that uh, it means that the text that you write in TiddlyWiki potentially um, can be a full interactive user interface. So it allows us to blur the boundaries between text in the traditional static sense and uh, text in the sense of the text that's embedded in the user interfaces that we use in the web. Um, oh, that's and fa so, so just so I get it, the idea, your second idea of what's distinctive and unique about TiddlyWiki is that the interface, the code that drives the program is written in the same set of objects or tiddlers as the authors write and so you 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 you're actually co you're actually writing in and with the interface in a way so, so for example it's in microsoft word the code for microsoft word is not written in microsoft yeah. word yeah exactly it's, that yeah. The, it's just like again just like the link the code is over here and the text is over here but in tiddlywiki it's all one so the uh, this isn't what I'm about to say isn't a good analogy, but the, the result of it is it's as if you acquired a car and that car was made out of Legos and you could simply disassemble and reassemble it in a different configuration. Uh, I call this quality um, that TiddlyWiki is generative. I don't think that's a good word at all, and I, I could do with a better word, but by which I mean it's a generative tool. It's a tool that you use to make other tools. Um, and uh, that, I think, is a fundamentally enriching thing to be because TiddlyWiki enables humans to tackle more problems than they, they, they would do if they didn't have the tool. So, yeah, so that second aspect, as, uh, and I kind of like the Lego car aspect. It's the reason that um, parents like to some parents like to give their kids Lego to play with because it's generative and it's although the current versions of Lego call me to question whether because you know here's the instructions and that you know when I was a kid Lego didn't come with instructions it came in a box with pieces that you assembled as opposed to these are the yeah. if you put them together in just this way you'll get just this object that kind of runs counter to my idea of mm -hmm. Lego and in some respects, some of my early exercises in class say, well, just follow my directions and you'll get it. But those are not intended to be the end result. They're just to get you started. Yeah. Um, are there yeah. other, did, did you build this concept of TiddlyWiki based on your experience with other software programs that did the same thing? Or did this just somehow emerge out of your head? I'd been building and playing with similar things for a long time. So in the early 90s, I did. Uh, I was commissioned as a. I was working as a consultant at the time. I designed and built a a hyper card clone for mm -hmm. the PC. Um, I mean, it, 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 there wasn't much to it. It wasn't as capable um, as type card, but that was just I can remember was explicitly yeah. thinking about these kinds of generative tools. Then when once wikis hit. Um, um, so I got obsessed with them, um, and uh, then TiddlyWiki, the original TiddlyWiki in 2004, that explicitly embodied this idea of tiddlers as small items, and um, I, my interest in doing it then was that I hoped that a tool that was optimized for small chunks 
would make it easier for me to write because I felt that I would be a better writer if I could write in small chunks that my tendency was to you know, write too florid, too long, um, trying to fill up a page kind of thing. What other tools um, have you used that have that characteristic? Um, the characteristics that I'm interested in, I guess, there's the original wiki and all of its, um, uh, you know, all of its uh, descendants. Things like Tweaky was okay. one that I was yeah. using in the late um, in the late nineties. I'm very interested in a bunch of. Um, a, um, there's a tool called Workflow on the iPad mm -hmm. at the moment that again is a bit like this. It's that there's there's always some of them, but um, I feel that we, you know, it's society puts far too much emphasis on the, the things like Instagram, say, that are not in any sense generative. I right. mean, it's a, mm. um, but, but, you know, we could look at it positively as being a frame for something else that is creative, but Instagram itself, you know, is highly restricted in its functionality it doesn't let you do anything other than the things it's designed. so so it, it is those characteristics i think that you just described of, of tiddly wiki that the the first the, the concept of a tiddler and the second the generative aspects that draws me to it as a teaching tool because i think what it does is it allows students to to use this very rich tool set and with relatively little investment of time create amazingly complicated things and see concepts and I, I constantly through this class see students saying oh for example oh that's how like um you know pandora works they tag the music and they allow me to search the yes and so even if it and i'm not sure that that you could run a service like pandora with tiddly wiki i kind of think perhaps not it may not have the robustness to have millions and millions of objects but I can get students to run it with 100 or 200 or 5,000 objects, and they can see that and then understand. So I love it as a toolkit. So I think it's a teaching making, tool. If, if you made such a thing with 5,000 objects, making it work with 5 million objects, to be honest, it's just a really dull computer science problem. Yeah, yeah. It's just a straightforward, reductive problem. Yeah, um, and then, and which, which I then lose interest in, in a sense, of not being a computer absolutely. scientist. But yeah. Well, listen, thank you. We have. Um, Oh, I forgot. I have one more thing I wanted to share with this, this group. What we are going to do now, um, and I have 2% left, so we're not going to go long, um, <laughs> uh, of my battery. We're going to have a tool that looks something like this, and you are going to be able to, students, we're speaking to the design right participants, you're going to be able to download a wiki with full set of instructions that I'm going to write this afternoon, and you're going to be able to create an annotation that's tagged with one of these four words, text, hyper, wiki, or tiddly, and associated either with an essay or a paragraph of the essay, and you'll create it. And that's the end of my battery life. You can't hear me. But that's the end of our podcast. I should have plugged in. <laughs>